What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another day in Car Mechanic Simulator 2021 with me, the Virtual Mechanic. And today's project, this is the Panzos Aspirante GTR1. And we've got the race edition, one of the latest editions from Pain. Lovely to see it. Thank you very much, Pain. This is available in the auction at the barn or the junkyard. We got ours from the auction, the bad auction. As you can see, the quality on this is absolutely atrocious. I don't know if we'll, what we'll be able to salvage, if anything. But did we get a good deal? Absolutely not. 27,122 is what I paid, and I could sell it for 22,596, losing out on 4,526 before we even begin. And even if we win a drag tournament, we might not claw that back. We shall find out if we can win the drag tournament, that is. Although I do hold my hopes quite high for this beast. The engine currently in this one is the V8 single overhead cam FME engine. We will be swapping it to the V8 5.2 litre double overhead cam Voodoo engine. Thanks to Dead Bob, aka Payne, the TK Aftermarket and Multiply, I believe, for getting that one added all in. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So the factory power is going to be totally different. And by the time we've tuned it up, it's going to be even different still. Even different still. Even more different. That kind of works, I think. We'll go with it and we'll, we'll leave it at that. This is what we're working on. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is a wild, wild car. Now, the rear clamshell doesn't open. No matter how many times you click, so you have to remove it to get in there. But the engine in this is sort of in the front slash middle. We click into there. There she sits down there. I'm hoping when we pit the new engine in, it's not going to clip through the floor or anything like that. Hopefully, it will be all right. But we do have a lot of stuff missing from this engine bay or this car, basically. It does look like all the suspension is there. We've got no connection at the gearbox. We're using our imagination for that one because it isn't there. But we are missing double radiators, the wishy-washy reservoir, the coolant reservoir, the brake servo, a lovely little fuse box, and all of the fuses to go in it. Down the back, we're missing out the battery, a small intercooler, and the fuel tank and fuel pump up there. We do also have an ECU in here somewhere. There it is. So we can get an extra bit of tuning from this one. By the time we get that beautiful engine finished and back in the car. Now, I'm completely unsure what colours to go for this absolutely wild beast today. So we'll think about that as we go through. But let's get this beautiful car started. Let's get it into the car wash. Let's get it cleaned up. In the car wash with the GTR, which is all we're going to call it from here on out because uh, long words, hard to pronounce, not English. But anyway, let's get the car cleaned. I've missed the button. There we go. Off you go. Get you all nice and clean. What colour is this base car underneath here? It is a lovely white with some carbon fibre and also there's carbon fibre all in there. That's all looking quite nice, made out of carbon, looking good. Look, all the interiors also got lots of carbon in it as well. That's going to be fun to play around with. We do have the steering wheel on, but no seat, just the one seat because it is the race edition. But let's get the rest of that interior cleaned. Get this beast back onto the lifter, get the engine ripped out of there, everything else stripped down. And then we can work on the lovely bodywork. There wasn't much left of that V8, but was the oil pan in there? Oh, we can't see because we've got a completely flat body aerodynamics. Best way for it. So let's jump in using the wheel and check. No oil pans. We don't have to drain any oil. No starter, so we don't need to take that one out. So let's just get in with this drive shaft. Out you come. And our first rusty bolt of the day. Nice and simple. Any at the back? No, nice and easy. Although connecting to our imagination but never mind out with the gearbox couple more rusty bolts on this piece here out you come and out you come i didn't check we, it looks like we don't have any exhaust there is no exhaust on there maybe it's a body part we'll find out a little bit later on but that should be everything for what's left of that engine to come out so let's get you back down towards the ground go and grab our engine crane and get that engine ripped out of there out you go and let's did we get everything? I certainly hope so because there wasn't much left anyway. Yes, nice and easy. We've already checked out the engine bay. Everything is missing, but we do, as I say, looks like we have all of the suspension. So I'm going to crack on now, get all of that stripped out, get the engine ready to go. We're going to be using that V8 Voodoo engine, which is going to be pretty awesome. And then we'll start working on this beautiful bodywork. That's everything repaired, replaced and upgraded, ready to go back on, including building that beautiful voodoo engine and we've also stuffed it in there and uh the power rating on it is just a little bit extreme that does have performance parts and a few extra parts from tk aftermarket so that 1419 horsepower is insane and we haven't even tuned the ecu yet so we've still got a little bit of power increase to go on this one we still got some performance parts to go in so later on it will probably be just a little bit higher but now let's get on with this body work Let's see what we need to take off. So off with a windshield. 
Anything there? Doesn't look like it. Side skirt. No. What have we got? Oh, rear clamshell. That piece can obviously come off. Off we go. And this is where all the suspension stuff all clips into. So there is like a real piece there. It's just built into the frame and it looks pretty awesome in my opinion. There's a rear bumper. So that needs to come off as well. What else have we got? We want to make sure we're getting everything. Round we go, round we go, round we go. Ooh, front right fender. You can come out and all. Do we have a front bumper? No, that looks like it's missing. I think that might be everything. Let's just grab this steering wheel out of here and see if we have well and truly got everything. Let's see. That's not the screen I want. 1% on there and nothing showing up on there. So we have got everything off. Let's get the welding done. Now, this could be quite extreme with the welding. Uh, 27,000 I bought it for and the frames at 8%. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go two and a half thousand. Oh, he's absolutely nailed it. Loving that. Absolutely fantastic. There wasn't even that much welding because a lot of it is carbon fiber. But there we go. That's everything there back together. While we're here, let's just take a quick look at the shop for it. There she is. Now to get there, obviously, fresh import goods because it's a mod vehicle. And then the Panzo Panos Esperante. And that's everything we've got. Now we are building the racing edition and we want to make sure it all goes together nicely. So we'll probably be using all of these ones that say racing, including these lovely exhaust pieces. So let's get started. Um, let's just go with that big old front clamshell. Now it says racing, but we've got two options. We've got some... Ones with some vents and some carbon fiber or one without, and they are expensive. Let's just get the ones with the vents and the carbon fiber and see what that looks like when we throw it on there. Little carbon fiber fins on there. The vents at the top, that is looking quite nice. I'm not going to bother buying the other one. Way too expensive. For the front bumper, what have we got for front bumper? We've got one racing one, but also one with a little carbon lip. I want to see what the carbon lip one looks like when we throw it oh it's it's full carbon it's not even a carbon lip that's the one we're going to go for still fits still all works so we'll keep that for the headlights where are we uh we've got two options for the racing headlights do we want indicators and stuff like that or do we just want to go for the straight up it's not a road car let's just go for the straight up racing style on there so we'll get them in in you go and in you go there while we're here let's just get the windshield done down at the bottom one with a stripe one without a stripe so we're going to go for the racing one with the stripe in you go nice and simple now the fenders front left and front right fenders where are they in here uh so we want the racing ones for definite we don't just want the clips or stuff like that so that's a nice and easy one plus it looks like they've got some carbon there as well we're not going to repair what we've got we're just going to get new stuff and pin it all on there in you go and in you go there hopefully that was the right one indicators on them or marker lights we'll call them marker lights onto the doors as we go around what have we got for doors racing and non-racing so we'll go with the racing ones racing and racing that should be nice and simple in you go and round to the other side in you go the exhaust obviously we're going back up we're using that one there and if you basically there's a little warning if you install this on the road car you can never take it off so be careful we're obviously not installing it on the road car. This is the race car. So some lovely side pipes on there looking pretty awesome. Front right windows. Where have we got? Have we just got normal windows? Is that the only option? Oh, so the left window is just the one option. The right window. Why does the left window not have a racing equivalent? Is that missing? Well, I'm going to keep them matched. So we'll go with that one so that they are matched up. If I just go around to the other side. Is it meant to have it? does seem weird but i don't i kind of don't want to have mismatched windows on there so we're going to leave that as it is is it, are we supposed to have it for a reason is there something in there just quickly open this door i don't think so so i'm going to leave it like that just because i think it looks a little bit better there's a gap there but there's also a gap there so that's fine we'll leave that as it is go around to the battle mirrors obviously We've got racing mirrors or normal mirrors. They've got carbon fiber. So we're just going to use the beautiful racing mirrors on there as well. In you go. Round to the other side and in you go. And now onto that beast of a rear clamshell. And we'd also have a rear bumper as well. So what have we got? Racing rear bumper. Well, that's pretty evident. We kind of like all the uh, vents and stuff on there. So we're going with that one. And that's got a much bigger wing on it. So we're definitely going for that one there. So let's get these in. In you go and on you go there. That's what is that carbon fiber as well? That is carbon fiber. There's lots of carbon on this build. Loving that. 
And then just the tail lights. Now, I don't think there's any other options, so we're just going to go straight up with the tail lights. In you go and in you go. One on that side, one on that side, and I think that's everything for the body. As it's a racing edition, no license plates or anything like that for it today. So we think we have got everything. Uh, we've just got some interior to do. Now, I did like the steering wheel that came in it, so that's going back in. And the seat it wants is the GW500 seat, which is very race style. But I'm not sure I'm going to keep that one. So let's go into our interior. Definitely keeping that steering wheel. It's very race inspired. Uh, as for the seat, we could go for the sale of GW500. We could. Where are you? Somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, there they are. Oh, no, that's not them. Where are they? There they are at the top. We're going to have them in different colours, but I'm not quite feeling that. What could we do? I mean, we could also... Go, oh, I mean, that's that's very race-inspired. But these are normally quite big when you throw them in. So we'll see if that fits. Just that one. What else have we got that might look good? We could go for the Zonda. It's a bit, bit extreme. The Viper looks quite nice. Or the Vantage. Mm, they're a bit too comfort-based. We don't want necessarily comfort. We want support. We are racing. And what else have we got theoretically that looks we'll see if that one fits what else could we throw in here that looks like it's going to fit the part i think that might be our options might be our options we'll see what they i mean i definitely would rather have the mspm1 from multiply is that going to fit and not be too large and still actually squeeze nicely in there no you see it's clipping through at the bottom if we just go into photo mode yeah, lots of clipping on that one. So we're not going to go for that one. That's fine. Let's get you out of there. And let's just try the other seat option we went for, which was the M4 GTS. How does... Oh, let's just close that so we can have a slight better look. Looks like it fits in there quite nice. Go into photo mode and see what we've got. Is there any clipping on the sides? Doesn't look like it. Any clipping at the back? No, that's what we're going to go for then. The beautiful M4 GTS seat is the one we have chosen let's just get our steering wheel on and then double check we've got everything before we pit this beast into the paint shop and pick some lovely colors is that absolutely everything body's only at 94 percent, so we are missing something somewhere oh the engine cover of course we're missing the engine cover that doesn't open and if i take that off to try and put on the engine cover is there can i go in underneath somewhere and see it how do we get the engine cover on? Hmm, that's quite interesting. I don't quite know how to do that one, so bear with me while I try and figure that out. Here we go then. I bought the racing engine cover. If you go underneath and go into assembly mode, you can just about see it highlighted. So we're going to pop that racing one on there, bring the car back down, rip that front clamshell off, and see if we can actually see the work we have just done there. Off you come. Oh, there it is. That is an absolute monster on the top there. I'm quite liking that, so we'll leave that. Although I did think it was going to be carbon fibre. It did kind of look carbon fibre on the images, but it turns out it's actually not. Oh, there's carbon fibre on the front fascia, but nothing on the top. So let's put our lovely cover back on. Oh, I see why, because you can see it through there. That's why there's only carbon fibre on the front. But we'll get our headlights back on. In you go, and in you go. And now, let's double check again. Have we got everything? 100%, 100%, 100%. That's what we like. Let's get this one into the paint shop and pick some colours. In the paint shop with our GTR1. Now, there's three factory colours in this one. A lovely metallic silver, a standard gloss black, and a standard gloss white. But I'm not feeling any of that. Also, no liveries with this one. But let's see the colour I'm going to go with. I'm going to go for this one here. I'm just going to switch it into metallic. There we go. That's the colour we're going for. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. We just nip into our water droplet, thanks to the quality of life mod. I'm making the screws the same colour as the paintwork on there, 114, 160. Although they won't come out metallic, but it should put a nice green on the engine and all the suspension. And I'm not going to do the rims. I may come back to that and regret my decision and then try and do the rims a little bit later on. But we're just going to go with all screws for the moment. So let's get it painted. On you go. Looking fantastic. Let's just come out of this mode very quickly. I'm going to nip back down to the front because I'm just going to show you something very quickly. I took the engine cover off so I could paint it separately. And if I go into here, we can just about see that engine cover from the front. So you can get that one in nice and easy. And the reason I have done that, if I just go quickly into photo mode so I can go a little bit lower so we can see. 
I painted their front fenders or the front metal pieces there in a matching green just to give a little bit little bit more going on under there. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Loving that one. But there we go. That's what we're going to go for. I'm feeling like this would be a light vehicle. So we're going to go with a little light aluminium and carbon fiber with a bit of green on that engine, although you're not going to see it. Of course, we're going to do a little bit to the seats and steering wheel. If we can get it in there and make it look good, it all depends. Because there isn't really any chrome on this build. It's very race car, so we've got like, as you can see, like light bits of metal in there. Not fully chromed out or anything like that. Lots of carbon fibre and then that beautiful metallic green bodywork. So that's what we're going with. Let's get it back on the lifter. Let's get everything painted and start getting it all back together. That's everything painted and back together for the beautiful GTR. Looking insane. Loving this, especially with some of the red accents we've got underneath. We'll talk about all of that in just a moment. So let's get in. Let's have a look. See what we've got going on in the engine bay first. Now, obviously, we've got the wishy-washy reservoir and the coolant reservoir not painted. Well, our two radiators both in a beautiful metallic green. Uh, we've got the ECU Type A up here and the brake servo. But the uh, fuse box in a lovely little carbon fiber, a bit more weight saving on there. The fuel tank is also carbon fiber. And we've got the metallic green small intercooler up there got a bit of carbon fiber on the battery brushed aluminium and a metallic green tray and now let's talk about the suspension at the front here we've got metallic green upper and lower arms we've got a gray drive axle it does go into that box in there we kept the brumbo brakes in their original red because it looks quite nice and then we splashed in a few more red accents as well just to make it look good we've even got carbon fiber on the brake shields and also carbon fiber on the shocks there looking very very good now if we jump up to the front it's very similar except we do have the brushed aluminium uh, cross member in there we've got the shocks now obviously we've got upper suspension arms which are painted invisible along with the two bushings on either side and that's because they do officially clip through the top there and i didn't like it very much i mean the shocks do clip through a little bit but they don't quite look as bad as the upper arms did now when i did paint them using the quality of life mod to invisible along with the bushings and installed them the bushings stayed visible just they went like a solid black and i was like oh no this isn't gonna work and then i took it just to a photo location and brought it back to the garage and it has worked so if you are doing this one yourself and you want to do that same trick using the quality of life mod don't worry it will work just take it to somewhere else and then bring it back to the garage and it'll all be fine looking good in there now i did change the steering wheel i've gone for one of multiply steering wheels in there looking quite nice there we go i put some color on it made the wheel a little bit darker just so it all matches in and we did also get if i go back out a little bit of carbon fiber on the back of the seat there along with the seat in a bit more of a gray color just to blend it all in looking absolutely fantastic but now we need to go and build that beautiful voodoo engine in we go we've got it on the stand already we've got the oil pan in carbon fiber the block and heads are in a brushed aluminium with a bit of green on there hence why we're keeping the green accents and we did also keep some of the red on the inside of the heads which is why we left the fuel filter in a cheeky little red as well plus we got a few other accents now we've got two camshafts on either side four camshaft caps per camshaft so eight and then 16 in total along with our four spark plugs two cam gear a's and what well, two cam gear a's and two cam gear b's two big timing chains two little timing chains and two timing chain shoes on there as well just to finish it all off now let's get in and get this engine finished starting with the timing cover in a beautiful brushed aluminium in you go looking nice get you all bolted up now the bolts will all go green when it's in the car we will see that in just a little bit water pump i just did in a solid black because i didn't want the aluminium on the aluminium on the aluminium uh Plus the water pump, I've used the uh, Coyote water pump uh, from the TK Aftermarket, which uh, adds a bit more power. That's what I was after. And it's a lovely grey, so I just left it in that grey because it looks pretty good. Over to our alternator on this side, which we've done in the brushed aluminium. Looking nice. Power steering pump on this side, which is in a green. Not a big fan of it. I kind of wanted to get the roller at the front a different colour, but I couldn't get it to work, which was a shame. Then we've got the idle roller, which is in a green on there. And then we've got the crankshaft pulley also in a lovely green on there. Uh, now for the belts, this is the normal belt that goes on there. It looks quite good. We've just done it in a matte black. And then we've got another idle roller just in there. And then this belt here is actually from the TK Aftermarket, thanks to Multiplies Editions, um, just giving us a little bit extra power because we're trying to squeeze as much as we can. From this beautiful beautiful car the belt tensioner is in green and brushed aluminium looking very nice on there and that's it for the front our oil filter is got a carbon fiber cover on it i'm calling it that and we're sticking with it 
And then our head covers are in that beautiful body coloured green, looking very nice. Let's get all of that bolted up and get them all in, along with some ignition coils to go over the top. So let's get them on. In you go. Not painted because there is a cover to go over the top of this one that looks quite nice. If I get that on there, it's the carbon fibre one. And uh, we made the in the lettering on the inside go a beautiful green just to finish that off. Now let's get the other side up to the same spot. There we go. That's that all done. The same at matching on either side. Now our exhaust manifolds, I've done in brushed aluminium. Might be a little bit weird, but I have done the exhaust tips on the car in brushed aluminium as well. So hopefully that's all going to match up nicely. Round to the other side and get them in. On you go. Lots of bolts. There we go. And then the lovely piece on the top, the intake manifold. Now, for this car, you can use the standard one, the performance one, or if you've got, obviously, the TK aftermarket, which you have to have to get this engine, you also have a lovely racing carbon fiber one, which looks absolutely fantastic. That isn't painted. That's how it comes in that beautiful carbon fiber. Throttle body, which is specifically for the Voodoo, we did in carbon fiber and green. Looking good. Bolt you up. And then we've got a couple of fuel rails on the side specifically for this one. These are the Voodoo ones. Looking good in carbon fiber with the green plates on them. Hand built with pride. Absolutely fantastic. Round to the other side. This one's slightly different. Just a different side. Doesn't have the plate on it. But there we go. All looking very good. Absolutely fantastic. Let's get this beast of an engine off the stand and dropped into the car. Let's get it in and see how it looks then. Obviously, we're not going to be able to see it because we can't even open the hood on this car um, because it's just the front clamshell. So how about we take that one off? And the headlights and then we take our engine cover off as well and probably struggle to get that back on go into photo mode raise ourselves up in the air just so we can get a look at the top of that engine it's looking a pretty good on there i'm liking that and if we zoom in just a little bit and go down you can see all the lovely green bolts on there just finishing it all off very hard to see very compact engine bay but it looks good nonetheless let's get all of that back on very quickly in you go crouch down at the front you can get that engine cover in there and then on back on with the headlights in you go and in you go and let's get it up let's get it up in the air get a gearbox and drive shaft in oh there's my uh brushed aluminium exhaust tips they're looking quite nice in there but let's jump on in and get this gearbox in in you go you are in brushed aluminium plus a splash of green if you just look on just there with some lovely green bolts going in the starter itself is in that metallic green just a base not forced with the quality of life or anything like that and then we've gone for the carbon drive shaft with brushed aluminium connecting parts, I suppose, as they were. And again, this goes to a piece inside built into the frame. So that is what it is. And there we go. We just got to get some liquids topped up and some wheels done and then get the windows tinted. Are we even going to tint the windows on this? Yeah, we probably should. Let's get the windows tinted and see how that works with this one. So over you come and let's get in and have a look at that. Now for the windshield just go into windshield i've got it set from 50 from my last build but that's looking quite bright so let's let's just go up to our standard 70 and 69 i didn't ask for that 70 please it doesn't want to let me um apply it there we go thank you very much let's just see what that looks like on the windshield and if it looks good i'll get the side windows done the same gearbox inside the car but never mind whoa yeah that's not going to work Maybe we shouldn't put any tint on these windows. That's got a very big glare off it. Oh, let's just bring it down a little bit and see how it goes. Yeah, there's lots of glare from these windows. I tried 50. It still didn't work. This is zero. So I think we're just going to leave it at zero and hope that the glare isn't too much when we're racing a little bit later on. So we'll leave that like that. Next up, let's get some wheels done. Let's get these rims finished off then. Just need to balance this last one and get the last two rims on the car after making sure everything did fit front and back. So let's get on with it. The rear rims, for the rim itself, we've gone for rim at 281. ET of 40 at the rear. 19-inch rim, 305 width, 40 profile on there. In you go. Looking beautiful with a carbon fibre centre. Obviously, not quite a full carbon fibre centre, but carbon fibre in the centre and then a light matte grey around the rim and on that very centre spoky bit. I'm classing that as a single wheel locking nut for a race wheel. Kind of fits, if you ask me. But anyway, onto the front. They are a 19-inch rim, ET of 35, so slightly less ET. 285 width, so slightly less wide, and the 35 profile, so slightly less profile on there as well. So let's get them all in, looking absolutely beautiful. All the liquids are topped up. We're not tinting the windows. We're leaving them as they are, as you saw. 
And that's it all done. So let's get this beautiful car outside and in the sun. Well, there she is, all finished and looking absolutely fantastic, in my opinion. What do you all think? Do let me know in the comments below. This is one beautiful, beautiful looking car. I'm um, hopefully it's going to be quick on the quarter of a mile. I imagine it should be with the horsepower we've already got. And we haven't even finished tuning it. So let's jump in and see what this beautiful beast sounds like. Love in the interior in here. Loads of carbon fiber. Looks absolutely fantastic. Although that does look like some floaty dials. But let's get the engine started. That's not the right button. Let's get the engine started. We do have some floaty dials. Nice little grumble on the tick over there. Let's give it some gas. With our wonderful floaty dials. Plenty of rev limiter extensions on there. That is sounding pretty awesome. I'm liking that. But we've only got two things left to do. Number one, get this beast onto the dyno. And number two, get it entered into a quarter of a mile drag tournament. On the dyno with the wonderful, powerful double overhead cam Voodoo 5.2 liter engine in the Panos Esperante GTR1 race edition. 1,419 horsepower this engine has a factory. How much have we increased it by today? I've got a feeling it's going to be crazy. Yes. Yes, it is crazy. And we're still over revving. There we go. 1,525 horsepower gained. More than another engine on top of that at 108%. Bringing the measured horsepower to 2,944. This is absolutely wild. And a drag rating of A. 999 we're only entering the quarter mile tournament but I, I think if we can keep it straight we might have this one covered let's have a look at the gearbox tune for today here she is all i've done is adjusted the ratio i haven't touched anything else um i brought it down to 106 kilometers an hour then 200 in second gear 305 in third gear 401 502 didn't touch any of that all i did was move the final ratio up to 4.5 and hopefully, fingers crossed, this will work without too much wheel spin or sliding. Now, we do have an ECU Stage 3 fully tuned in this one, giving us an extra 16% tuning. If you want to learn how to easily do that every time, there is a short just up here, or you can click the link in the description below. There is also a link in the description below to do the carbs every time, but we don't have the carbs in this car. Enough of that. Let's get it into the drag strip, and let's try and win a quarter mile tournament. Time to get this nearly 3,000 horsepower beast into a drag tournament. King of the Sands, quarter mile, A-class, pay our 1,000 entry fee. And let, oh, every single opponent is the Ford Mustang GT66. Well, um, I don't know, kind of know what to say by that. I mean, are they are they top of the tournament? We've got lots of friends with us today. We've got Multiply in there at the top. Uh, we've also got King Slowpoke and Skin Gravel down here as well. So, uh... Let's just get into it. They're all in the same car, so let's just get into it and see what we can do with race number one. First up, we've got this bronzy-looking Ford Mustang GT66. I can't believe they're all GT66s. But anyway, first one's in bronze. Can we beat it? I certainly hope so. This car is wild. Let's go. Let's see if we can keep it straight off the line. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Into second. Might be a bit of wiggle there. Into third. Will we need fourth as well? We will need fourth as well. And across the line. That was crazy. 8.441 seconds with a top speed of 333 kilometers an hour over in an instant. That was it. But we did win the first race against the first Ford Mustang GT66. Let's see who is up next and in what car, I wonder. So out of our friends, King Slowpoke made it through. Uh, doesn't look like anybody else did. Multiply went out. I mean, everyone's in. The... This is wild. I've never seen a drag board. Do you know what? I'm actually going to take a screenshot of that in a moment because that is absolutely crazy. Everyone's in a GT66 apart from us. So for our next race against the Ford Mustang GT66, what color will it be? Let's get in and find out. For round two, we got a red GT66. They're looking pretty wild, but can we beat this one? Will it have a slightly better tune? Let's get in. Let's find out. Let's go with the overpowered Esperante. Off the line. Come on, you beautiful beast. Into second. Little bit of wiggle straight out and into... Oh, no, I've lost it. And that's us out. We've lost it. That is us out. We had too much wheel spin, too much power. We've lost it on our second race. That is so unfortunate. I can't believe that, but it is what it is. And let's get back and see. We'll do, I guess, one more 1v1 just to see if we can keep it straight and get a time down. Maybe two. We'll see.
So yes, unfortunately, we went out because we spun with a little bit too much wheel spin, which is unfortunate. I had to correct a little bit too much, and it just spun out, and we lost control. But it is what it is. These things happen. But anyway, Slowpoke also went out, so none of our friends are left in there. I wonder what car's going to win. Will it be a Ford Mustang GT66? Let's find out. Yes, it was a Ford Mustang GT66. Now, our second race didn't count because we were disqualified. So I'm going to go and do two quick 1v1s and try and get some uh, different opponents, hopefully. We'll see what happens when we do some randomization. We got 750 credits for taking part. That's always fun. Back at the entrance as we got disqualified. A quick 1v1, a quarter of a mile, three randomizations. One, two, three. I'm going to keep going until it's something now, not a GT66. The Are You Not Entertained Lamborghini Nitro Tractor, the old speeder board champion. And let's see what we can do with this bad boy. Absolutely crazy aero on the Lamborghini Tractor. That was the old speeder board champion. Will it be able to beat our new quarter of a mile speeder board? Not that we're building it, but will we be able to beat it with the Esperante? Let's find out. Let's go. And let's just try and keep it straight if we can. Off the line. Come oh, bye, Tractor. Yeah, no, that's this race lost as well. Into third, into fourth, and across the line. So we didn't win that one, but at least we got a time down. 8.583, not quite beating our first run, so that one is still the best. And a slightly slower speed, a little bit too much correction from myself there because I didn't want to spin out. We'll do one more just to see if we can beat that time. So officially, we'll do three more randomizations. That tractor is absolutely wild. Well done, Payne, for modding it in. It is fantastic. Also, this Panzos Esperante. Well done for modding this one. Is It is also fantastic. So three more randoms. One, two, three. And it isn't the GT66. So that's what we're going to stick with. The drag edition of the 1985 Ford Mustang. Let's get into it and try and win. Now, that's a wild looking build for that Mustang there. Looking fantastic. Hopefully, we can beat it in our final race of the day. Let's just get in. Let's go. Now we've got to remember to try and keep this beast straight off the line. Let's go. Let's go into second. Little. Oh, too much wiggle. And over. And there we are. Disqualified. I'm just going to hit restart. And we're going to try that one again. Let's go and see if we can keep it straight off the line. Come on, you little beast. Into second. A little bit of wiggle off the acceleration. Into third. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Into fourth. And across the line. Probably not the best time because we did let off the acceleration just a little bit. In fact, our slowest run of the day with an 8.833 at 321 kilometers an hour. So it is what it is. Our first run was the best. Let's get that one back onto the speeder board and see how much we can sell this beautiful, beautiful race car on. Hopefully a nice bit of profit. Well, unsurprisingly, it has taken the top spot on our new top 10 speeder board for the quarter mile drag racing league. The panels. Esperante GTR1 race edition with 2,944 horsepower. Wild. 8.441 to the quarter of a mile. Isn't the quickest. I believe the tractor did a 7 point something. In fact, all of my top 10 on the speeder board were all around the 7 second mark. So there we go. But with a speed of 333 kilometers an hour or 206 miles per hour. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic from that crazy wild little beast. Loved it. But let's get back outside. Check it out one last time. And get it sold on hopefully for a profit well there we go as you just saw first place on the speeder board loving those carbon rims they look fantastic carbon and gray good combination but anyway let's talk some facts and figures about this beast we bought the car for 27,122 and could have sold it at a loss of 4,526 at the very beginning but we didn't do that we spent a further 141,628 buying body panels swapping out that engine tuning it up entering a drag tournament and painting this beautiful beast paying our total spend 168,750 hopefully there's going to be some money to be made from this beautiful race car. So let's get in and let's take a look at it. There it is, all 100% complete with 253,000 kilometers on this bad boy. That engine is swapped in. Obviously, we swapped it from the FME single overhead cam to the double overhead cam at Voodoo, a 5.2 liter engine with a base horsepower in this car of 1,419 and then tuned up to 2,944, almost 3,000 horsepower from this absolutely wild race car. Sadly, we didn't win the tournament, but only, I'm assuming, because uh, we couldn't quite handle all of that power because I'm not a pro racing driver. But anyway, now it's time to get it sold on. Hopefully some prof for some profit. Let's see what we've got. 
with a sale price of 503,462. There's definitely some money to be made. Quite a bit at 334,000. 712 absolutely fantastic link in the description below if you want to grab this one from the steam workshop or just search for it on the steam workshop it's very easy to find it's one of the most recent cars in there so there we go go and grab this one at well done pain it looks fantastic let's get it sold and see what we've got coming next off you go and let's have a look up next we've got another relatively new mod from lit this is a beautiful beautiful bmw this is the m2 G87, and we went for the M Performance variant. Now, this is only available from the salon and the auction house. If you want to get it from the junkyard or the bad auction house, you have to add junkyard to your config file just so you can get it from there. My assumption is that this one was just in a bad wreck and then just left in a ditch until it was picked up and taken to the junkyard and then finally sold off at an auction. But did we get a good deal for this beast? We did. We actually did. 49,822 is what I paid. And I could sell it right now for 56169 making 6347 from this beautiful, beautiful BMW. Which is what we will be working on when we come back on a Monday. Absolutely fantastic. Loving this one. I cannot wait to get stuck into it. It's made by Lit. So there should be some pretty cool body kits and some nice styling options for it. Hope you did enjoy today's video as we draw it to a close. What did you think of the Panzos Esperante? Let me know in the comments below. Leave a cheeky little like if you did enjoy it. Don't forget to check that subscribe button. Maybe you've subscribed before, but it's unsubscribed you because you haven't watched it in a little while. But now we're back full time again. Two videos a week, Monday and Thursday. So double check you are subscribed. Make sure you stay up to date with what I create. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a beautiful day, whatever it is you're getting up to. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Like and subscribe for virtual mechanics.